Right, well, we've arrived at Port Ban Holiday Park and uh, look at this view. We're in the camping field, which has us and one of the little vans just showed up now. I'm guessing they're here for the night. Nick's just gone off to take Molly for a quick walk just to discover what's around beach-wise, but I think the tide's in at the moment. We'll talk to you about the journey over here a bit later when we've calmed down a bit. <laughs> but this place is fab. I mean, it really is quite remote. Like I said, we'll talk to you about that after. Um, just gonna chill out and have a coffee uh, when Nick comes back. Here we are, guys, approaching the toilet block on this campsite, Port Ban. I think Nick's taken you around the men's already. Not quite sure what he's done, so we'll go and have a quick look. Um, right, okay, let's start on the left. Lots of information here on the notice boards. Port Ban, quiet after 2300 and silent after midnight. Well, there's only us here and one other person, so as soon as we go to bed really early, there's not gonna be much danger of any noise after 11. That over there are, I think it's Islay you call it, Islay and Jura. The islands, beautiful view. Anyway, deterring from the job in hand. Okay, lots of information on the boards, which is really good. Bikes for hire and some COVID rules. Sanitizer on the doors, which is always a good thing. And here we've got, oh, got washing up area. It's very posh, isn't it? Everything you need, it's got detergent, microwave, toaster, kettle. More sanitizer and fridges. What does it say on there? Hands must be sanitized before and after use. That's fair enough. But perfectly handy if you're coming in a tent or a camper that hasn't got a fridge. Absolutely perfect. Kitchen with a view. Right, okay, let's have a look what's next. Right, I think that's the men's. I saw Nick going in there. Okay, disabled facilities, that's always good. And we are, bearing in mind, when we came down the track, we were about a third of a mile um, past the main reception, maybe a little bit more, because predominantly it's a holiday park, so there's lots of statics here, and then they've got this little camping field on the end. But to be honest, camping field's probably um, the highlight of this place. It's, it's terrific. Massively good view out there. Right, okay, this is the ladies. This is very nice as well. So we've got two hand basins. Looks quite new. We've got hair dryer, which is nice. And toilets, all very clean. Let's have a look what's through here. I'm guessing they're the showers. Yes, showers. Okay. Yeah, very nice. Tiled floor, got a stool in there to put your clothes and a shower curtain. I hate shower curtains, but never mind. Hand dryer, hello, soaps, and another hair dryer, 20p for the hair dryer. That's quite good. I haven't dried my hair in a week. Brilliant, okay, so that's the facilities down here. Um, we were left to our own devices, so we kind of chose a pitch at the back because it was just a little bit more sheltered off the sea. And also, because the dogs, we're, we've got our door facing out towards the hill. Um, so if anybody else does arrive on site and they're over here, like these guys, then the dogs can't see them, which means it's a bit more peaceful. So it looks like there's a couple of glamping pods over here that I noticed, so we'll go and have a quick look. The pitches are quite big, and all with electric. It's nice and just, a little bit rustic and not too much in, you don't feel, well, no lines, because there's nobody here to be put in lines. So let's go and have a look at these little glamping pods. There's our lot. Oh, look, they've got some chews. They're happy for a bit. We just got them outside attached to the wheels before we take them off for a nice long walk. And I believe the clock's changed tonight, so We'll be able to get out a bit earlier in the morning, but bearing in mind then tomorrow night, it is going to be dark an hour earlier. But never mind. Oh, these look like the old lady that lived in a shoe. Really cute. Up the lane. It's 
quite windy here today, quite chilly. The wind's coming right off the sea. Oh, these look nice. Two of them. Picnic bench outside, barbecue. I'm gonna try and take a sneaky peek. Oh, they've got electric hookup. Let's have a sneaky peek and see if we can see. Oh, right, okay. I don't know whether you can see in there. There's a microwave and there's like a bed sofa. That's quite cute. Oh, there we go. Right. And we'll go back and get the tribe and we'll shoot off for a lovely walk. I think we're going to have a fantastic sunset here tonight.
Oh, look at the baby. She's doing so well. She's doing so well with other dogs. Good, Lyra. That's good that you didn't eat the other dog. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody looks at us like we're some kind of maniacs. And here we are. We're just trying to figure out how to get across here because on the other side of here is a nice beach and there's an old dilapidated house right on the headland that I really want to go and have a look at. But I'm just trying to work out how we can get across. Dogs can swim. But I am not going in there, it's freezing. So here is my end of day brief um, where I'll just bring you all the, the facts and figures of where we have travelled today. Uh, so we left, left uh, Westport Beach Car Park this morning and uh, we took the A83 down to Campbelltown, um, lovely place Campbelltown. Um, and then we decided we have two options to get to where we are today which is uh, near Kilberry. We could either go back up the A83 the way we'd come past uh, Westport Beach Car Park and all the way back up, or we could gamble and take the B Road. So I looked at Google Maps and the B Road looked very narrow. It did go on for uh, 16 miles. Um, so we took it, we decided to go for it. So that was the B842 from Campbelltown up to Red House. Uh, and then we back on the A83 uh, at West Tarbert and then back onto another B road, which was the B8024 to Kilberry. So, um, distance was only 57 miles from in the whole day. Fuel consumption was 21 miles per gallon. Uh, my average speed was 19, that's one nine mile an hour. And it took me two hours and 53 minutes. So that gives you an idea of what the roads were like. Very, very narrow, very single track. There were plenty of passing places, um, but it's about learning what you need to do with, when you come across a passing bay. Um, but the locals around here are very polite. I've had no issues at all with, with anybody. Um, so it's a good journey. Um, tomorrow then we're gonna be moving on. Uh, I'm not sure yet where to, but Amanda will sort that out with you uh, in tomorrow's uh, video. Um, so for now that's everything from me hope you enjoy watching uh, as always uh, if you like what you see subscribe to the channel please it is free um, hit the bell notification icon and then you'll be told when we upload our next video uh, anything you want to say just drop a comment in the box below and uh, me or amanda will get back to you as soon as we can